Ciao everyone, it's Alyssa coming at you with another slow fashion video. The last video of 2018, in fact. So for this week, I give you how to choose quality outerwear and how to style it for winter. Uh, for those of you who are in the Southern Hemisphere, I apologize. But not really, because you are in the beautiful, beautiful sunshine, and I am extremely envious. Um, so if you do like this kind of video, then let me know in the comments below, and I will do one for spring-summer outerwear. For those of you who are new, welcome. Every week I talk about slow fashion with a heavy focus on the principles of minimalism. So using and loving what you already have, and making smart shopping decisions so that you can create a closet full of pieces that you actually love and wear. So if that sounds like your jam, hit subscribe below. I post every Sunday. And for those of you who are coming back, big hello to you and a big thank you so much for watching uh, and a happy holidays and a most wonderful new year. I cannot thank you enough. I wish I could send everybody a Christmas card, really, but I can't. So from me to you, happy holidays and I, I wish you all a wonderful new year. Um, with that said, let's jump right into it. I really think you only need two types of jackets. The first being a really nice elevated, more formal wool coat that you can wear when you know you don't have to be outside for very long and your look has to be a little bit more elevated and refined. The second coat, which is probably pretty obvious, is your parka. This is the coat that is should be geared to just keep you warm when you know you're spending a lot of time outside. Let's start with the overcoat. What do I look for in my wool jackets? The first thing is if you're starting from scratch, actually I should show you this one. If you're kind of building your closet from scratch or if you're just looking for a nice wool investment coat, then I would definitely say start off with a neutral color. It's going to work with everything you have and it also looks richer. I do find black to be a little bit dark, so I think gray or camel are two of the nicest colors for a wool coat throughout the winter time. If you really love color or if you're looking for a secondary wool coat in a different color, then I would go with a navy or red. These are two very timeless color schemes that still go with a lot of pieces. Other things that I look for in a wool coat are number one, the length. I like a wool coat to be relatively long, that way it keeps me nice and warm. Hitting around the knee is probably the most flattering. It's tough to pull off a wool coat that hits right at that midi length without wearing a heel to elevate it, and it's tough to wear a heel all the time in the winter. The other thing that I look for is that the buttons go at least at my torso or lower. That way I'm still, I'm a little bit more protected from the elements all the way down, or as far down as possible. The next thing I look for, and this is really hard to find, I find in newer overcoats and wool coats, is a fully lined coat. So you see how this lining goes all, goes all the way down to the bottom of the jacket, and it also goes all the way to the end of the sleeve. This is a vintage coat, it was made in Canada. I mean, my best wool coats have been thrifted and I've paid less than $30 for each of them. Um, so don't discount thrifted wool coats at all. Um, but look for that lining because even though it's a really light layer, it still creates another layer of heat. It's not necessarily about how many layers you wear, but the air that gets warm in between those layers. The last thing I look for is I try to find one that has a percentage of cashmere or at least some sort of wool cashmere blend. When it comes to styling your overcoat, there are a few tweaks that you can do just to spice it up a little. So one of the first things that I like to do with my overcoat is I belt it. The key to belting your overcoat, there are two ways that you can actually do this successfully. Either you can leave it buttoned as it would be and you can belt it, which will give it a little bit more volume, or you forego the buttons and really close it right up. I think what's really important to make this look work though is that you have a belt that is thick enough 
to really hold its own against the weight and bulk of your coat. The second way to make this work is that your belt needs to be really easily adjusted. That's done by having a belt either like my black leather OB belt, someone asked me about hero accessories, this guy. So uh, a belt like this that has sort of one loop that you can tie and really manipulate, or my personal favorite, which is a belt that has holes that go from end to end. So you can really control where it falls and where it cinches. And again, because this belt is leather, it's a dark brown, and visually, it's able to hold its own against the heaviness of this jacket. If it's long enough, oh gosh, I've lost it. I take this end and I just loop it through this guy here. So it adds a little bit more interest. If you want to jazz this look up even more, then I would keep the belt and grab a scarf that shouldn't be too thick or heavyweight. You're gonna need a scarf that is maybe, I would say like a medium weight scarf. One that will still keep you warm, but um, that is easily, uh, that you can easily manipulate. And you're just taking your scarf and you're looping it underneath your belt. So you're creating a nice visual kind of line. This is a great little styling trick to make you look taller. The only issue here is that your neck is open and not protected. So I would wear this type of thing on a day where it's a little bit milder. If you want a look that is a little bit more refined, I would just tie my scarf under and let it sit kind of underneath my jacket. So what I've done is I folded the scarf on a diagonal. So I've taken one side of one end and the opposite corner of another. That way it creates these two points. I find scarves just fall better when you start out with them like that. So I'm, oh wait, I've done this wrong already. I'm just gonna take it like this. I just tie a little knot underneath. This is also great because it gives you a little bit, uh, an extra layer of warmth around here, which is great. So that's more of a dressed up look with your scarf. The other thing that you can do with your scarf, which my cousin did in Rome, and I thought this was absolutely a fabulous idea. It's super simple, but I really do think it kind of changes the look of your coat. It's just wearing your scarf like a poncho. So I put my scarf on the rectangular like this, put it around, and I make sure one side is a little bit longer, and then I just take this and wrap it around. And it's that simple. I feel like, ugh, it just looks so chic. Um, you could secure this with a brooch or a really beautiful pin, but I like to just put my uh, purse over the shoulder and then it stays put. And finally, with your overcoat, sometimes I add a vest. You can put your vest over top or underneath. I think it looks cool both ways, to be totally honest. If you're going for like an athleisure look, a puffer vest would look totally cool. So there, I think that's kind of neat. You've just kind of created a whole new look. When it comes to an overcoat in the winter, I really like to keep all of my accessories a little bit more elegant and elevated so that I don't feel frumpy. Don't get me wrong, I love the look of an overcoat with a cool pair of sneakers, but that really doesn't translate well when it's like minus 30. If I need to wear a hat with my overcoat, I look for, I have a toque that it is just a little bit more streamlined, a little bit more simple. No, all of my accessories do not match, I mean, I think as long as they're neutral, then it really helps you mix and match with all of your different coats and outerwear and all that kind of thing. The other thing that I really like to do when it's not as cold is I like to wear a pair of longer gloves with my overcoats because I find the sleeves are a little bit wide and so having a long glove not only ensures that you stay nice and warm and that there's no skin showing, but it also just looks pretty cool. First of all, when it comes to seeking out a parka, there are a couple things that I really like to keep in mind. The first, again, is the length. Something that goes around or perhaps just below or above my knee is great. Um, the other things that I look for in a parka are a nice placket across the zipper because that means the zipper is going to have a little bit more help and support just in lasting longer and being reinforced. I also seek out a parka that has a really nice tapered and 
more fitted silhouette. Other thing I always make sure to have is a hood, one that comes up all the way over my face. And I do look for a hood that either has fur or faux fur on the edge. And this is really important because the fur or faux fur actually traps the snow and ice and whatever elements Mother Nature is throwing at you, and it really does protect your face. My coat is a down-filled coat. If you are looking for a synthetic down or an alternative to down, then I know Patagonia has both a really cool synthetic down that sounds awesome, and they also use recycled down and fur, which blew my mind. My absolute favorite brand of parka is uh, Moose Knuckle. This is a Canadian brand, very similar to Canada Goose. However, I prefer Moose Knuckle because of those little design details that make it feel a little bit more interesting than just a utilitarian winter parka. I also just love the fact that this is a Canadian company. They are designed and manufactured in Canada, so the provenance of the materials is sound, and I believe this is still a family-run company. They are not sponsoring this video. They have never sent me anything for free. I paid a lot of money um, for this moose knuckle and my very first moose knuckle which I bought over a decade ago and now my mom's wearing it. When it comes to styling your parka, I'm not gonna lie, this is probably not what you want to hear, but if it's so cold that I need to be wearing this, then it's about survival. I don't care what I look like, I just don't want my nose to fall off from frostbite. Okay, so with that being said, I just embrace the cold. I button myself up to the fullest. I grab the most outrageous winter hat I can find, although this is a beautiful trapper hat. It was made in Quebec all out of recycled fur and leather. I've had it for like 10 years. Then when it's really cold, I throw on a pair of leg warmers. They sit on top of my giant tall winter boots so that way I have like no exposed leg and People stare at me a little in the streets because I'm so bundled, but I don't care. I throw my boots on even though it's getting really hard to bend over at this point. Finally, I take my most thickest, warmest scarf. This is getting kind of funny. And finally, when I'm so bundled and looking like I'm about to go on an Arctic expedition, the only bags I wear are either my big trusty backpack, which really suits that kind of uh, utilitarian look, or my fanny pack when I don't want to carry such a big bag. I really don't love the look of like a beautiful designer purse paired with this. And you can't forget your shades because that snow is pretty bright. So that's it. Uh, this is my real life version of winter styling. Um, I hope you have an absolutely wonderful holiday season and new year. I will be back January 6th with another slow fashion video. Let me know what you thought of this one, if you liked it. If you'd like to see more vlogs next year or see me post twice a week, let me know. I'd love to hear your comments. Um, but in the meantime, happy holidays. See you in 2019. Thank you so much for watching. Ciao! Cheers!